Hey, how's it going everybody? Mark Vidal here once again. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. So today we're fishing at Chimney Park in Mission, Texas. Chimney Park in Mission, Texas, it's a, um, it's like a, a mobile home park where people come and they rent out some spaces right on the river, on the Rio Grande River. This is where we're at right now. Right behind me on that tree line, that's Mexico. So we're fishing the Rio Grande Valley River and um, we're fishing here in Mission, Texas in the famous Chimney Park. Look it up, you can always come. It's a $5 admission fee and you can um, come over here to the boat ramp and um, dock off, right? Back up your boat, your whatever you're gonna come in, your kayak, whatever you wanna do. And you can fish the beautiful waters of the Rio Grande River. Um, I call it the Rio Grande Valley River, right? Because we are in the valley, it does run through the, uh, through the valley and it is the Rio Grande River, right? But it's uh, the Rio Grande River, it's right here. It separates the United States and Mexico, especially here in the southern part of Texas. And um, it stretches very long. It stretches very, pretty far, the, the Rio Grande. And there's awesome fishing. A lot of people don't come fishing here because they're a little scared of the cartel violence on the other side behind us. But as long as you're minding your own business, nobody's gonna bother you. You do have a lot of law enforcement, as you can see. You have a lot of law enforcement back here and um it's a pretty cool place you know so you you don't have to worry about danger or anything even though you're fishing on the border it's okay um you can come out here and enjoy the beautiful south texas fresh water one of the biggest rivers um in texas in the southern part it's pretty awesome right so i hope you enjoy the video for today hopefully we catch on some bass and uh, see what else we get on right fish on Texas rig with a plastic worm. So Texas rig, basically you're gonna have your um, bullet weight on the top and it's gonna be free lining. And right now I tied a uh, 20 pound monofilament to my braid line. I did a line to line. So I'm putting, I'm using this as a leader line for my lure since I got braided line, right? So I put my weight, my free weight. This is probably about a 1 16th. And I'm gonna get my hook. So today we're gonna be using these owners, three aughts. And you're gonna tie your hook. I'm gonna be tying it with the clinch knot, right? Clinch knot? I think so, yeah. So just put it in. I'm gonna spin it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna get this ending of the line into this lower loop that I made while turning my line. Bring it back out, slide that knot all the way down. That's it. So that is your rig. That's your Texas rig. That's your Texas rig. Now we're going to put the the lure, the worm, we're gonna make it weedless with this bass hook, right? And we are using the gamblers and this is a watermelon red. Watermelon red has always been one of my favorite colors um, regardless of the brand of baits. Watermelon red has always been one of my favorite colors as well as the as a plum, I believe. All right, so when you're gonna do your weedless setup, you're gonna go ahead and place your hook all the way down until it hits this little um, loop right here. Once it hits that loop, you're gonna take out your hook like this. You're gonna run it all the way up until it goes up and it passes that little curve right there. You see, once it passes that curve, you wanna measure your hook to see where it comes out. So you, your hook's gonna come out through there. So you put your thumb placement on this curve right here on your worm so you know where your hook's gonna go in. And you're gonna go in and out. And that's your weedless setup right there. I haven't done this in a little while, but this is old faithful for me. This is how I like catching bass. You see we're drifting with the wind and we're going upstream. So we're going against the current, but with the wind. It might sound a little weird, but that's the way we're going. The current's always coming down. 
um, east, west to east is always going east because east is where the where the ocean's at. So this is where this river dumps out. So we're drifting towards the west, and all I'm doing is just casting towards the sides. These edges, these edges are very good for bass. So when you fish a real grandy, always throw towards the edges because that's where the bass are at. Um, you have to kind of study and figure out the retrieve that you have to do. You have to figure out the movement that that worm is going to work. It's going to attract the bass, right? Once you figure it out, then you just keep on doing the same thing. You can either do a up and drop or a real straight and just slightly pull like what I'm doing now or figure out any type of movement that you might think works, right? Got to have that confidence also. You see I hit it right on the bank. You want to hit as close to the banks as you as possibly as you can possibly get real close that's the trick you always want to get the banks i'm not saying we're gonna catch any bass right now right because it's been a while but that's originally the way that we used to do it back in the day and you see there's a lot of houses there's a lot of docks normally this is not an area where I would um, bass fish, but we're still trying it. You know, maybe they're, they're under the docks. They're always gonna be under the trees. Um, you always wanna hit those, those banks. Right, so before you know it, you catch a bass, you won't even be expecting it. So that's the Mexican side. This is the US side. As you see, you see a, a capsized um, raft right there, inflatable raft. That's what these illegal drug mules and and people crossers use, right? <laughs> people crossers, human smugglers, right? That's what they're using out here. They're using these uh, rafts and the border patrol, sometimes when they catch them, they'll put holes on the rafts and they'll let them capsize. Yes, you heard it right. The Border Patrol likes to litter our Texas waters, but um, for the most part, they're doing their job, right? <laughs> but that's not a lie. Just the way it is. That's their job. That's what they gotta do. See, there's another raft up there with a with the air out because that's where they probably left it there too. The Border Patrol, they just left it there. So we're slowly drifting towards the west upstream there's not too much current because if there was a lot of current then we'd obviously be going to the other side so i threw it to those rocky areas right there you know rocks how i love casting next to the rocks a lot because that's where the fish are hiding in between those rocks those rocks they um, provide shelter homes um, nice little areas where bait might be sitting and these fish are going to come and eat them See, slowly towards the edge where these rocks are at. And there's another raft over there. It's infested of rafts. Oh, I got a hit. Damn, I got a hit. All right, so you can see there's another raft right here. And there's another one right there on the bank, on the rocks. So basically, whenever these rafts get um, busted by the border patrol, they'll slash some holes in them with their knives. Like that, they're unusable, right? They wouldn't use them again. Other than capturing the drugs and uh, the people, they um, try to put a little damage into the whole um, cartels smuggling stuff right so we're casting towards the edges over there and we're slowly reeling I'm just gonna try the slow reel so that's Mexico over there everybody Yeah, you can stop it like right here 
like pointing this way and it'll probably drift us and you can stop it right there. We're on, baby. Right under the boat. We're on. Damn. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Nice. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> Heck yeah. Right on the tires, right there. Right in between those tires. And go ahead and release this bad boy. Oh. Yeah. All right, we're on again, everybody. We're on again. So we're using these Gambler. Oh, this one's a bigger bass. We're, <laughs> we're using these Gambler baits, the same Texas rig I showed you all. And we're just shooting towards all these edges. Look at that, look at that. Oh yeah. This is an LCD 956 custom rod. It's perfect for salt water, fresh water. Look at that. Oh. I'm gonna bring it around over here. <laughs> beautiful beautiful fish i love fishing the rio grande river i've always told everybody that the rio grande river has some of the best uh freshwater fish in the state of texas look how big this river is there's so much stretch of it it's a beautiful piece of water out of our beautiful state and then you come catch these bad boys out here in the rio grande river check it out we're using these gambler watermelon baits and these owner hooks and there we go we're gonna release them beautiful, beautiful setup that i'm using once again i'm using a texas rig with a 1 16th bullet weight and i'm using this bass hook with this gambler watermelon and i have a 20 pound monofilament leader it's tied to my 12 pound braided line to my um daiwa ballistics this is an LCD 956 custom rod. This is made custom from LCD 956. This is about a $300 rod. Um, due to the parts that it has and everything, it comes out to about close to $300. So we're just casting, as you can see on the edges, letting it sink a little bit to the bottom. And we're not even working that lure. We're just retrieving it slow. We're just retrieving it slow. Giving it time for a, a bass to come and and chase it right you want to give it time to get some fish's attention if there's a bass or there's a fish nearby trust me you're gonna get its attention you see so i got nothing but i'm not stopping there i'm casting it out again sir Whew. are we allowed to drift on the mexican side one second Are we allowed to drift yeah, al along I mean, the Mexican? We, yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. As long as we're on the water. Yeah, as long as we're in the water, the people who want from Mexico or whatever, they, they, they come to our side and stuff. Uh, all right. Well, close to it, you know? Okay, we just yeah. caught some nice bass down there, but I like all this area right yeah, there, man. Right. As long as you don't beach up, you're good. All right. It's kind of like, like a gray area, so it's not, yeah. Yeah. All right, brother, thank you. All right, everybody, so we just, um, we just got to go ahead with the U.S. Border Patrols. We asked them if we're allowed to fish along the Mexican side, if we're allowed to drift, because we want to drift along that nice area. As you can see, all that grass, all that um, brush along the river banks, that's what I look for when I'm bass fishing the Rio Grande. I want to get all these nice little places because fish like to go and shelter themselves inside in the bottom of these uh, bushes or grass whatever you want to call them right <laughs> so um yeah we got permission well not that we got permission but we got confirmed that we are allowed to fish along the mexican bank that's mexico right there so we're gonna fish along the bank we're just gonna drift from that curve and we're gonna drift 
Remember, just cast towards the edges and retrieve it slow. Cast and retrieve it slow. Cast and retrieve it slow, and you'll have some pretty good success out here. Um, try out different lures, all that good stuff. Worms have always been my go-to for bass fishing. No matter where I go, I love using, you know, the the average worm, whatever, and it's always worked pretty good for me. So that's the U.S. side. We're gonna come along the Mexican side and drift back towards the ramp and probably call it whenever we get closer to the ramp. So this is what we're going to do right now. We have these at the LCD 956 bait and tackle shop. Let me show you what we're using, but first let me try to do something real quick. Uh, there we go, okay. So this is what we're using. We're using the Gamblers. Seven inch ribbon tail watermelon red. So you put your hook right in your worm until it gets to this little curve right here. And then you're gonna stick your hook out and you're gonna bring this all the way up here and you're gonna kind of pass it all the way through. You can see pass it, you're gonna hit the curve, pass the curve, and there, pass it all the way through after the curve. Right there, that's where it's gonna stop. You're going to see where your hook's gonna come out. So you're gonna put it through the outside. You're gonna see it's gonna come out through here. That's where you're gonna put your thumb placement so you can indicate where your hook's coming out. Take your hook out and there. That is your Texas rig weedless right there weedless we want to throw it all up in here and just bring it in slow yep. right there perfect just reel it in slow let's go straight forward I would have wanted it to come more towards the bank but we'll try it there all these little areas inside those little pockets just let it sink all the way down and bring it in slow all right I'm going to reel it in just a little bit this it went pretty far and check it out guys just like this right in there just bring it in slow you see how long ah I got off When you see stumps, woods, trees in the water, you wanna to try to hit as close as you can or in between the stump or under. That's a big secret that I learned a long time ago. See, check it out, just like this. Uh, should've gone a little more. Ah. Uh. Got a hit right now. Or pedal on the right side. Hold on. Uh, yeah, just the battery. So we're using the trolley motor.
all right everybody i hope you enjoyed today's little video i know it was a small video but you know at least we came out here we try out we tried out the motor um the motor needs a little touch to it but we're gonna figure it out we're gonna bring it back out here and then we're gonna try it all over again so that was the whole point of today's trip to try out the motor on the on the john boat the trolley motor got us around so that helped us a lot and it helped us catch some bass right that's what moved us this whole trip because the motor didn't turn on but the trolley motor kept us going and it, it, it did pretty good it, we did very well you know we caught two bass and um it was a pretty successful trip overall you know except for the motor problem but that's why we brought it out so we can try it out to see what kind of adjustments we need to do to it and get it running 100 percent and we're just gonna try to catch something here on the edges and uh, maybe we do get something maybe we don't but we're gonna finish the day off it's a beautiful evening as you can see all around me the real grand is super beautiful awesome mexico and his beautiful water banks river banks over there and yeah we're out here i don't know if you can see andrew but he's back there over there behind that tree he's trying to get something behind that tree right there look right there he's right there <laughs> 